Thank you very, very much, Charles, for having me. So um, what uh, we're going to do today, I'm just going to talk briefly about um, my career. And I know most of you who know me are going briefly and Cindy don't go together. But I'll just kind of do a whirlwind across the career. And then I have like the obligatory career advice slide that I'm going to use uh, to help keep me focused. So. Um, I actually started in 1985 when I was four as a carbonate geologist with Sohio. And um, I think that's when I met Bob at carbonate school. And that was really cool because everybody else who was starting in with the company was going straight out into the field and doing operations. Um, so I made it about six months, then they laid off my entire team. Me, uh, the summer intern, and my exploration manager survived. And, and um, the exploration manager told me they wanted to lay me off, but HR wouldn't let them because I was too new. So um, anyway, so that was just kind of the introduction that many people in the room had to the industry. Um, from there, I actually uh, did go into that rotation of working um, in operations on well site. And most of my work was offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. And that was just a, a really, really pivotal uh, piece of experience. It's ingrained. It's, it's who I am. You know, actually seeing um, people all working together as a team to, to test people's ideas, to determine whether or not they were, um, you know, that, that there was actually something there in the subsurface and also to do it safely and collaboratively as a team. It was phenomenal and it, it those three years that I spent offshore seemed like a long time. They, it was a long time because <laughs> you don't have any life when you're doing it, but it was, it was pivotal and uh, gave me a really, really solid foundation. When I asked a question later in my career uh, of something in the field, I knew the ramifications. I um, had some idea of just how dumb that question might sound and uh, certainly a lot of uh, understanding of what a simple question might translate to in the operational world. So uh, from there I went back into, um, into uh, development geology, uh, production, worked my way through appraisal, and ended up in exploration. And kind of the first 10 years of my career were all about exploration and uh, development. And I just really uh, got to see a lot of different places while based here in Houston. So that was kind of fun. Most of my friends were moving around. By this time, we were fully owned by BP. And so you know, an international career was there to be had. But I uh, was dual career, as Charles mentioned. And so I stayed here. But I was able to see a ton of things. And I think um, I worked a lot in, in uh, different basins. But my heart's sort of in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, but I also worked in Venezuela, in Colombia. I um, got to lead field trips in the Gaspé Peninsula, um, in Quebec, which is definitely another country um, within Canada. And, uh, and then um, worked in California leading field trips, and in Arkansas, which is another country within the US. <laughs> so loads of fun, really getting to hone my craft. Um, from there, I then spent kind of the next sort of 25 or so years uh, kind of moving around in different leadership positions and again alternating from exploration into technology and uh, again got to see, um, you know, see people's uh, ideas come to, to light, figure out how do we fund, how do we pick the uh, most important prospects to drill, the ones that could be game changing from a financial or a new play test, and certainly in technology, seeing what the business needed in terms of technologies and helping to bring many of those to light. Now I stand up here as part of my hand as a rock jock, as a geologist, but most of the big breakthroughs that I was associated with in technology were geophysical. So um, it's it's been phenomenal and, and really exciting. And so Lots of work, and again, in and out of the Gulf of Mexico. So probably half my career in the Gulf of Mexico and the other half mm -hmm. kind of doing global new basins in other parts of the world that aren't the Gulf of Mexico. So um, anyway, and then uh, just a little bit about what I'm doing now. One of the things that I was always really interested in was being, um, I always use the word ambassador. I didn't know what it meant. 
Um, I would have it, you know, you do your little career charts and where are you heading, and I'd always put this term up there. And um, so I think I've kind of found that. I actually work in a part of BP that covers all of the Americas, and I do a lot of different things in that role. Um, but I've become more and more uh, embedded in the parts of the company that are focused on low carbon and climate science. And so um, now I'm actually the leading a study um, on behalf of the National Petroleum Council, which uh, is working at the request of the Department of Energy. And they've asked us as, as a broad group of industries what um, where the US should be moving in carbon capture use and storage. So I'm getting to go back to my roots, looking at, uh, s at subsurface storage, at EOR, and then also looking at some really cool things like direct air capture, which uh, is just really, really neat. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm still here. I'm still an ambassador and, and really enjoying what I do. Um, so advice-wise, and I think, Linda, I'm going to totally Okay, yeah, you say that like it's easy. The one that says Ryan's career, because I'm just going to do Bobby's. Okay, so um, I had two slides. Let me just put this one up here. So, um, so Charles was talking with, with me and Bobby about, you know, sort of what, what would you say to a room full of students? And so I kind of had this little um, puzzle about sort of what what's been really helpful for me in my career. And so I called it the exploration mindset, but it, it kind of applies to anything. And the, the key for me is I like doing something that nobody's ever done before. And I like solving problems that people think are impossible to solve. And I think it's kind of all this, this sort of mindset. So just kind of some goofy, um, some goofy graphics here, so forgive that. Um, I think many geologists are just serial optimists. You know, you you know, it's kind of an interesting uh, career path. It's sort of half art. It's half science. It's half uh, storytelling. That's geologist math, if you're wondering. Um, you know, it's just all sort of adds up to something magical. And so, for me, the thing that I've always enjoyed about being a geologist is getting these little bits of information from the surface, from the subsurface, from little bits and pieces, putting those together to tell stories with multiple versions and multiple different outcomes, um, but to see the opportunities and that, that could be associated with that. So a lot of my career has been about optimism. Um, probably the most important thing to anyone in this room, whether you're sort of six, six months into your school career or, you know, six years after your retirement is about being the best at your craft. So to me, it was always very, very important to be um, a really great geologist. And I found this little sixth grade autograph book. Who here remembers autograph books? It's OK. Admit it. Thank you, Evelyn, for admitting that. And it was really funny. I would said um, one of my science teachers had signed it to Cindy, a very nice girl, which is all you can say for me in like fifth or sixth grade because I had braces and glasses and was just horribly awkward, um, and, a, and a very good geologist. And I just thought that's really interesting because I didn't know that was my career path. But um, so I thought, well, wow, I always want to be a really good geologist. So really, really understanding your craft, uh, being great in your uh, technical analysis is really important. Uh, Problem solving, uh, we talked about that in the you know, sort of optimism. You still want to put these problems together. Uh, really, really testing your ideas. And for me, being able to share uh, an opportunity, talk about the risk, talk about the uncertainty without your audience glazing over is, is a fine art. And I consider that something that's uh, success. It's problem solving and then be able to to share the story so that everyone can understand the problems. It's about problem solving as a team and not trying to achieve individual credit for that. Um, I added business acumen uh, to this because we've all seen it and we've all kind of done it. 
you come up with a problem, but it, it doesn't actually have any application to what you're doing. So sometimes you park those, because sometimes you explore them at night. Like I used to work, you know, turn off my workstation when I was a manager. I still had a workstation for about 10 years. And like 5.30, I would uh, turn off my PC, turn on my workstation, and just look at Seismic, because it was so cool. And uh, so that was, uh, you know, really important really great for keeping my skills alive, but I, I didn't have a lot of business application to that, so it had to be a hobby. But really um, understanding what you're doing and how it serves to a business, uh, um, you know, it serves a pragmatic purpose. It's not just the science. It's not just the, the uh, problem you're trying to solve. It's, it's going somewhere, because someone's usually paying you for that or going to pay you for that. And then the last things that I kind of felt were important to career before I turned, well, one more thing before I turn it over to Bobby, um, is it just probably the thing about me is, is I'm really tenacious. And um, when you're coming up with ideas that are a little bit out of the box or a little bit random, a lot of times they don't stick, right? The first two, three, five times you share them. So somebody told me early in my career about this, you gotta tell somebody something seven times before they really get it. And when I had that boss, that boss you had to tell seven times. And I did, and I found all kinds of creative ways to tell him um, that something was actually, uh, you know, tell him the merit of, of an opportunity, and it worked. So I learned to be uh, very graceful and uh, very respectful, but if you thought something was a good business opportunity and had merit and could create opportunity and could create value for the company, I'd stick with it um, until someone just told me to back off or until we move forward with the opportunity. And uh, both of those happened. So um, that's really kind of all I want to say a little bit about the sort of 30 plus years in um, my career. Just sort of some, you know, uh, things that I have have served me well in my career. And so I think, you know, if, if you follow things like that, you can aspire to become something like Super Charles. <laughs> and <laughs> you knew I was gonna do it. So um, we can't all be Super Charles, but we can try. So with that, I think I'd just like to turn it over to Bobby to share some of his career comments. Yes. Sure.